thanks to Brilliant for helping support this episode. Hey crazies, quantum mechanics is best explained when you can judge your audience in real time, so I thought I'd come at this a different way than usual. By trying to explain it to my wife. If a person is not experimentally measuring it, then what is a measurement? Very good question. <laughs> This episode was made possible by generous supporters on Patreon. I guess first off, what do you know about quantum mechanics to begin with? Good question. Not much. I took intro physics in college, and then I've been, you know, with you for a while. I mean, it comes up occasionally when we're talking and whatnot. Quantum mechanics has to do with probabilities and things, I don't know, appearing and disappearing and entangling and... Sure. I don't know. I think that's... I think it sounds pretty typical. Okay. Basically, the idea is that particles, or at least the behavior of particles, is described by waves. Now, we don't necessarily mean the waves that you're used to thinking about, like nice wave shapes on water or something. Mm -hmm. It's a little more abstract than that. A wave is just a solution to a wave equa equation, and we've decided that something like Schrodinger's equation is a wave equation. And so even though th there are solutions to it that don't look like traditional waves, we call them waves anyway. You kind of do this in physics where like, you're, we're gonna use the word wave, but it's not a wave. It's the same thing that you do with spin, right? Yeah. It's not spin, nothing's spinning, but we're gonna use the word spin and we're just gonna go with that. Very, very simple solutions to Schrodinger's equation do look like waves, but it's it's not universal. Sure. But if we... it's not universal for <laughs> physics, does it even matter? That's fair, fair complaint. Mm -hmm. So they're described by waves, but what's really going on is, like you said, it's a probability thing. Mm -hmm. So the solutions are what we call probability distributions. Right. And so they're just- I'm, I'm nodding like I'm like, yes, probability distributions. I understand what that is. Right. No, no, I'm just, these are words that I know what they mean, but I don't know what they mean together in this context. Yeah. Just so we're all clear on this. <laughs> So yeah, so the probability distributions, now those distributions, they can be distributed over lots of different properties, but usually it's across space, like position, location, that sort of thing. So you get maps like atomic orbitals and stuff, the things you usually see um, when we talk about the probability of an electron. As long as we're not observing it. R well, we're gonna get to that. Okay. This, this is gonna be very important for today today's topic. Okay. When we have this wave model that describes how a particle exists or what, how, you know, how it's behaving or how it's going to behave, mm -hmm. we often say that the particle could be in multiple states simultaneously, which is, is a gross misinterpretation or misrepresentation of what quantum mechanics actually says, which you know what we'll probably get to in a future video. It's just that the states of these particles, they don't exist like normal things exist. Welcome to quantum mechanics. <laughs> right. Here we are. And so things are just weird. They're weird. I'm sure it can be difficult to understand and explain to the normal population that only has, that only has normal, like, science to work with. You know what I mean? If things don't exist the way that we expect them to exist, I'm sure that that's very confusing for the rest of us. Right. So we say this, this particle exists in a superposition of states. Mm -hmm. But th that superposition is one state. It's not multiple states. It is one existence for that particle. It's just that that existence doesn't make classical sense, right? It's that superposition is a combination of multiple classical states, the kind of states that we'd expect a ball to be in. I mean, I feel like you're really splitting hairs though to say that like, well, it's not existing in multiple states at the same time. It is existing in one state that is all of the states at the same time. I mean. Right, well, it's, it's a real actual single state that is a combination of physics states that we would understand pre, you know, relativity and quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. But what quantum mechanics has shown us is that there are other single states that exist that we don't understand. Okay. So not even talking about superpositions or we are, that no, we is are. what we're talking about. A superposition okay. is a single state 
that just doesn't make sense to our our eight brains. Is it like four dimensions, if you will? How like we get three dimensions, but when you start talking about higher dimensions, we just really struggle with like understanding what that's like and how that works. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. So okay. so these particles exist in a way that violates our intuitions. Mm -hmm. There's one major problem, and it's called the measurement problem. Okay. Quantum particles can behave in a couple different ways. Okay. There's a very nice, steady, controlled way, which is when the waveform evolves over time, it changes over time very gradually, according to something like Schrodinger's equation. The other possibility is we take a measurement. Now, the word measurement has some ambiguity to it. Okay. It seems to imply a person needs to be involved and there needs to be an experiment, which is not necessarily true. If a person is not experimentally measuring it, then what is a measurement? Very good question. <laughs> I would say that a measurement is any particle interaction that releases information about a quantum system to the surrounding environment. Now that environment might be a lab with a person in it, but it doesn't have to be. Is this similar to like, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound type of thing? Like it produces sound waves, even if no one's there to hear it. Like this produces information, even if no one's uh, there to gather it. Not exactly. Future Nick butting in here for a minute. Her analogy about the tree making a sound is actually much better than I gave it credit for while we were filming. Now that I'm editing the video, I realize I was a bit too dismissive of it and I wanted to point that out. Okay, back to the conversation. I just, I'm, we're trying to define a measurement like this so that quantum mechanics doesn't sound like magic, right? It's not like human beings are looking at the situation and we're like, we're gonna look at this and see what it's doing and then it changes. Like we're not affecting the physics of the problem, right? Of the, of the experiment, it's just, happening because of like the way that we're measuring it. In order to measure something about an electron, we have to do something like shoot photons at it. Okay. And it's the photon that's making the measurement happen, not the person. So that measurement would happen if a person shot the photon or if the sun shot the photon. Exactly. Is the point here. Exactly. Okay. As long as those circumstances took place for that electron and photon interaction, it's considered a measurement. Okay. Again, with like using words yeah. that don't mean what we think that they mean. The problem we run into, what we call the measurement problem, is that even if a particle like an electron is in a superposition of, of states, mm -hmm. a superposition state, sure. I should say. Right, because it's just one state. Right, it's just one state. If it exists in a superposition state, if we look at it, if we try to take a measurement, we try to shoot photons at it, we will not see that superposition we will only see a single classical state, one of the parts of the superposition. It's like it collapses. Yes. Uh, in fact, we call it wave function collapse. Mm. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and this is a big problem, mainly because this collapse, this wave function collapse, in order for it to make sense, it has to happen instantaneously. So it's not a gradual shift. Right. Okay. And so because it happens instantaneously, and we know from our experience with the rest of physics that nothing happens instantaneously. Right. That it's a major problem. Okay. Is it a problem or is it just the way that quantum mechanics works and you just have to accept that, that it's this is a weird science that does not act the way that you expect it to act? That is a way that some people handle this, but not a way that everyone handles this. And so- Which way do you handle this? Ooh. Uh, we'll get to my personal opinion later. Okay. Quantum mechanics sort of brings to light a discrepancy in how people view physics. Sure. We like to view physics as though we're finding some deeper understanding about the universe, but it's not really what physics is about. Physics is about making predictions. Okay. Right, we wanna be All able to- All science is about making predictions, right? Right, well, you, exactly. So this, what we try to do in physics is we try to come up with a model that's going to predict future behaviors of things, okay. right? So in this case, quantum mechanics is predicting future behaviors of quantums or, you know, little quantum particles. Right, okay. It allows us to make accurate predictions. Correct. Using this branch of science. 
Right. All right, I'm gonna stop the conversation there before this turns into a 45 minute video. If you wanna hear us chat about interpretations of quantum mechanics, let us know in the comments and I'll upload the rest of the conversation. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. A special thanks goes out to supporters like Medic Hertz, who's pledging at the Asylum Orderly level on Patreon. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. If you wanna learn more about quantum mechanics, you should try out the Quantum Objects course available on Brilliant. It starts out teaching you how quantum measurements are made. When you're ready, you can move on and learn all about the mathematical foundations. Brilliant is a website and app that makes learning accessible and fun. Their courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces, so you can tackle them one bit at a time. And there are over 60 courses to choose from, so there's something for everyone. Brilliant helps you achieve your goals in STEM, starting with one small commitment to learning and building up to long-term challenge and growth. If this sounds like a service you'd like to use, go to brilliant.org slash science asylum today. The first 200 subscribers will get 20% off an annual subscription. You forgot to yell about conservation of energy. I forgot a lot of things in that last video, but if it makes you feel any better. Conservation of energy shall not be violated. And thanks for watching.